I don't know what you guys have done to poor Modlesis, man. <laughs> so, in case you're unfamiliar, when you send a replay on over to replays at loco.tv, it's Modlesis that goes over all of those games and then selects the best ones for me to go ahead and cast. Now, it turns out when you do this for a couple of hours every single week, it has a bit of a toll on your mental health because the man wrote me the following this morning. He says, Loco, we need to talk. Have you ever read Harry Potter? Where they talk about making a horcrux, where you have to commit a murder to literally tear your soul? This is also done by watching replays. Viewer submitted replays specifically. Bad, bad viewer submitted replays. There are some that are so bad, my soul literally dies. Literally. Like, when I die, God is going to ask, Hey, um, Mott, where's your soul? And I'll tell him, yeah, I lost it watching those viewer replays. And he'll respond, come on in, you've served enough time in hell. Loco, you owe me some f***ing pancakes. <laughs> I don't know what you guys have done to the man. Either way, today, it's time for three viewer submitted games of StarCraft. Three Silver League Terran versus Terrans. And apparently in the first one, we have the blue Terran player here on a light shade. Literally proxying a barracks. Oh, like, this is the dumbest position already for a... Oh my god, oh my god. It's right on the scouting path. <laughs> he doesn't care though. Never mind. That, that SCV had like blinders on, you know, like what a horse sometimes has. Anyways, playing here with the blue SCVs in the top left hand corner, we have Daniel and his opponent with a very creative name. He goes by the name of Opponent. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. So, I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down. If you have an awesome game of StarCraft though, <laughs> feel free to submit it to replays at loco.tv and maybe you can also hurt Motlesis just a little bit. You can help him make another Horcrux or something along those lines. It's been a long time since I've read Harry Potter. Either way, what do we have here? So these are gonna be Silver League games, right? So the thing is, obviously Silver League games, uh, I might need to do a little bit of fast forwarding. Usually there's gonna be some downtime and a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of cringe. Do you think he's realized yet, by the way, that there was literally... Yeah, he scouted over here. He did realize that apparently there was a barracks over there. For some reason, the scouting SCV never attacked it. What he decides to do is build a factory inside of the opponent's main base? Heh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Alright. Opponent here has realized at this point that there is indeed some shenanigans going on outside of his natural expansion. The problem is... Like, if you're gonna go for a contain, right, which seems to be what Daniel is doing here, you usually do so, so you can sort of, like, bleed your opponent out over the course of, like, the next, I don't know, 10 minutes. That poor scouting worker. I guess that was punishment for not attacking the SCV that was building his barracks. Um, the problem is that he is on one base over here, right? So, like, you can- oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you can, like, walk Marines up that ramp all you want, but it's not like you're actually gonna get an advantage out of it. Three reactors, by the way, so opponent here mining gas, but absolutely nothing to spend his gas. Okay, he's gonna finally now go for a factory over at home as well, fair enough. Um, anyway, no, no tech labs. Um, the problem is, if Daniel had an expo, this would be totally- oh. What? If Daniel had an expo, I think that this move would be totally fine. So what exactly is the strategy right now, by the way, to break out of this? The reason why this, by the way, wouldn't really happen so often at the pro level is that, at this point, there would be a barracks and a starport out, and then you would just load up a couple of medevex with units, and then you attack your opponent's main base while protecting your ramp. I'm a little bit scared that what opponent is- oh no, he's- oh yeah, I know exactly what he's gonna be doing. I think what the man is gonna do is just pump out a ton of marines and then lose them all. Don't do it. Look, I've casted many of these games. And while, you know, I clearly haven't seen as many as Motless is, I also have my feelings hurt many times already, okay? Please. There's even gonna be a, a tech lab right now on a factory here too, another bunker. If there's gonna be a siege tank over here and... Oh, oh. What's interesting to me is that, like, over the years, I feel like that is what's gonna happen. I obviously haven't seen these games, right? But over the years, I feel like... I've gotten better at predicting Silver League moves. Even though they theoretically and strategically make no sense whatsoever. Okay, he is gonna go for a tank. Now, luckily here for opponent, he is currently supply blocked. So I think if he wanted to go for a move out right now or so would be the time. He does have his own factory done at this point too. Why did we go for the gas, Geyser? What is that gas gonna do you, man? 
Anyways, one little reaper over here is gonna scout out exactly what's going on. It scouts a... an armory? Okay. I'm not entirely sure if opponent realizes that you do not need an armory to make a siege tank. Maybe he wants to go for a Thor? No. Oh yeah! What? Huh? This is not the Odin, man. This is not- No, 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 no! Don't do it! There's a siege tank now too! Opponent! No, 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 no! Oh my god, I can predict the future. I'm pretty sure this man is just about to lose all of those- No! Oh, okay, he unseached the tank. Good guy, Daniel. Still. Oh, oh. Oh my god. Yeah, I need to go out and buy a lottery ticket. Just because apparently I can predict the future now. So... What you gotta keep in mind, right? With all of those viewer games. Is that someone... So one of these two players submitted this replay to me. Like, one person out of these two sent me this game. Like, 99% of the time. <sighs> My question is always, it's usually the winner, right? My question is always the guy, or, or which of the two is the guy that, like, send it over. Okay, so the Thor is gonna stand there out in the open. This is not the Odin from the Wings of Liberty campaign, okay? You know the one that Tigus controls? Yeah, you can put it in high impact mode all you want. Um, it's, it's, it's not gonna do anything. I mean, it gets a little bit more range for anti-air. Congratulations. Do we fast forward for a little bit? He does, by the way, have now a natural expansion, so that's something. Daniel's going for a couple of starports as well, so... Gotta, obviously, gotta get a, an engineering bay here so he can go... Oh, no, he's going orbital. All right, Daniel. Thought he maybe wanted to go for an engineering bay proxy so he could, like, go for a planetary fortress in the net. Either way, um, opponent, I wouldn't mind it at all if you decided to just send out a medivac full of units to watch the other side of the map. Because she may have already noticed there is absolutely nothing here to fend against anything. Okay, I'm going to fast forward for a little bit. Pretty sure Daniel's just going to sit out here. Yep, doing a whole lot of nothing. So what was this, what was this NG bay for? I'm not sure. He's got himself an armory coming up as well at home right now. Going for three tech labs right here on the starports. Okay. Cloak is coming up here for the opponent, who's also, you know, named opponent. Huh? So we're going upgrades right now at this stage in the game. Fair enough. Right after getting these starports, though, this all makes so little sense. The standard is a standard for a reason, man. So what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit out here now? Because at this point, Daniel is obviously going to win, right? I mean, if that was the case, there's no way Motlasis is just, like, going to send over this game to me. And, it, I mean, it would be soul-crushing, I suppose, but not that bad. If it's just going to be one container, that's going to be it, right? I'm waiting for the bait and switch. Oh, he's getting the other cloaking upgrade. Okay, so he's gone for the uh, the Ghost Academy cloak at this point. Fair enough. Let me put it back down to normal speed. Two benches have made their way towards the other side. There is a fusion core coming up as well. as a couple benches here for Daniel. The problem is Daniel is currently supply blocked. Not making any uh, supply depots either, so... Yeah, he's just, okay, gonna drop a scan over here to try and kill one of his opponent's supply depots, which he desperately needs himself. Luckily for, uh, for Daniel, though, his opponent is now killing a couple of this, uh, this, or these SCVs rather in the mineral line, meaning that... No, 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 there's missile. No, don't do it! Don't, 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 don't! No, it doesn't matter, bro, those are detectors. Okay, he scans as well, not that it, like, serves him in any way. Daniel, what in the world are you doing, my man? Why are you scanning? Why, what the... Why did he just use cloak? Okay, he uncloaks. Finally, there was... Was that a supply drop? A drop? Yeah, yeah. So finally, he's decided to get another supply depot. Still not making any of those, though. Making supply depots is for idiots. Daniel's clearly not one of those. Oh. It's the weekend, man. Whoa! Do they have, like, little teeth at the bottom? What? Whoa, are you guys seeing this? Please tell me I'm not the only one that didn't know that. Benchies have like little teeth. They have like teeth painted on them. Huh? 
By the way, there's a nuke coming, and he did already get the cloaking upgrade. Look at the double cloak. <laughs> Blizzard never added making a second uh, icon for these. So the cloaking upgrade for the Banshees as well as for the Ghosts is identical. Oh my god, there is... There's gonna be a nuke available. No, 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 Don't tell me this is... Is he gonna... Ooh, careful, careful. Hello. What? Okay. That was very ballsy. He does have a nuke available right now. Oh my god. Do you think Daniel noticed it? Oh my god, Daniel! Daniel, pay attention! He's getting over here, but he doesn't see anything! Daniel! No! Daniel! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, the ghost almost, uh, the ghost almost uh, committed Sudoku there. Uh, just to... Uh... Oh my god. Well, that's one way of breaking out of your natural. Then over my crowing the marines. I love it. Well, that's one way of getting out of the natural. Yeah, that, that's certainly one way. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Stop it, man. Oh, god. Stop it. Do we still not have stim pack? Oh, we don't. No combat shield, no stim pack. No bio upgrades, no nothing. All we have is just a load of units. Oh, god. Okay. So, by the way, wait, 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 wait. What happened to that natural? It was killed by the banshees from earlier. Those banshees went all the. Oh, come on, man. This is wild that ghost is going across. I never expected, like, that that was ever gonna be the case. Okay, we're back to the regular moment in the game that we were looking at, or like the, the moment we uh, we started backing off from. Either way, now it's gonna be opponent who's ready to move across the map. Is he really going and hand shockwaves before combat shield and stim pack? Is this really happening right now? It makes the EMP ability better, for those of you wondering. I'm not entirely sure what he's gonna EMP here. Because last time I checked, these Terran units don't really have energy or shields. But I guess it will make the blast radius bigger and therefore more intimidating. So, uh, yeah, you gotta take that for what it's worth. Another tactical nuke coming up. Oh god. Well, that, that Thor. Yeah, that Thor is actually having a grand old time over here. <laughs> Thors are really good when it comes to picking off air units. Oh my god. Daniel, did you just break out of your natural by using a tactical nuke? That was uh, the Terran wet dream right there, though, right? That is the best way to uh, to land a nuke on literally everything your opponent has. A little bit risky though, because there was an NG bait that entire time. And obviously, he could have easily made a missile turret, which not only helps out with anti-air, but also is the detector, obviously. Daniel though, okay, finally has got some supply available at this point, after losing pretty much everything he had, to now also pump out a couple of Banshees. So even though his opponent's Banshees did a lot of work, he's like, you know what, let me waste some energy while I fly to the other side of the map. My Banshees can maybe get some work done as well, but not without Cloak, because I'm not going to be able to, you know, have any energy by the time I get there. Anyways, um... That was a long sentence. That, that's definitely exactly... Do these also have little teeth? They do have little teeth! I've been playing this game for 11 years. I never knew that... Look at them! Thank you for the angle. Banshees have teeth. Can you believe it? I guess that's one of those intimidation thing, right? Or intimidation things, right? Fair enough. I guess they did that on ships and maybe on some planes as well in real life. I don't know, man. Probably. Alright, so what are we doing now? Opponent has lifted his main base. No, no, no. Opponent has lifted his main command center towards the low ground. Fair enough. In the meantime, Daniel, like a true MOBA player over here, completely forgetting all macro. He's so busy microing these uh, benchies. Can we actually go to his vision? Okay, this is Daniel's vision over here. When's the next time he's got a macro? When's the next time he's got a macro? Take a guess. Well, his MOBA skills are apparently not that good. This is exactly what Daniel saw while in the game. He's now up to 1,200 resources. Don't get me wrong, opponent is not really doing a good time, uh, or a good, good, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> He's not really doing a good job, there you go. Macroing either. He's still not doing anything, Daniel! Daniel, this is not League of Legends, okay? Depleted. It's not even Heroes of the Storm. It's not Dota. Come on, man. You don't have to last hit in this one. You just need to kill stuff. He's not doing anything. Oh my god. 
I hate this so much about Silver League games, though. Where they just, like, get so carried away microing, in this case, three units, I guess, that they forget everything else. Look at this! He's still not doing anything! It's been a minute! More than a minute! Really? Re- Okay, now Daniel goes back to- Oh, Daniel. Daniel, that's embarrassing. Daniel. <sighs> Anyways, let's go back to the everyone camp. I just want to emphasize that one of these two players submitted this replay to me. I just, like, it's either Daniel or opponent. Both of them have made questionable choices up to this point in the game. And I kind of love it, not gonna lie. Still can't believe Benchies have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to let that go, man. Benchies have teeth? I'm gonna have to make that the thumbnail of the video or something along those lines. Oh, you look at that opponent here with the god tier scouting. This is actually really good. He's got a bunch of marines patrolling around the map and he found a random command center. Who called in the fleet though. Daniel eventually spent all his money. So I guess he's gonna be able to continue the harassment for a little while longer. I love the fact that opponent also got himself a raven out. Scans obviously are the preferred way of... You know, detecting I guess at the pro level. But there's no denying that this is gonna be a lot more reliable. Still by the way. No combat shield. No stim pack. But we do have enhanced shockwaves, but no ghosts. <laughs> we do also have a nuke, but again, no ghosts. <laughs> okay, there's another ghost just about to be ready. Here comes the fleet! A little bit different than Battle Cruise is what we normally see at this level, but the Benchies are doing a pretty good job. Wouldn't even mind seeing the speed upgrade for the Benchies. They're actually super fast. We go for the Hyperflight Rotors. I mean, you're not going to be able to nuke these. Right? You can just kill this. Yeah, you can just go kill this. Anyways, in the meantime, the Marines over here, they're like, hey, yo, psst, buddy, there you go. The Marines over here, we're just waiting for the next order. There is once again a Thor out. Opponent really loves it. Command Center, though, while it did finish there, it is going to be picked off as well. Don't tell me there's going to be an orbit. If there's going to be another Orbital Command dying to, okay, Banshees, I would be very sad. But luckily, okay, that didn't happen. Good. Oh, my God. Is, is Daniel doing this? I think Daniel may actually be doing this. I'm not sure though, because the guy is not really like, he's got no income. Mm. I mean, there's no way he's gonna be able to kill those Marines. Yeah, no, Benchies are good, but not quite that good. There's still a nuke available, by the way. At this point, we do have a couple of ghosts. I feel like both of these players have spent the majority of the game supply blocked. Oh, okay, well, if you're just gonna give up the Benchies for free, then... I <laughs> Hey, here I was thinking maybe Daniel could, like, get some more work done, huh? No, 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 don't fly it to the corner. Don't go fly your command center to the corner. What do you think this is, Silver League? Wait. Oh. <clears throat> no, but seriously. Oh. Opponent, really? You're the one with the offensive GG now? Are you kidding me? Oh. Oh. Yo, opponent, did you just offensively GG your opponent? Oh. Alrighty, so, I've got myself a little bit of water. I took a moment to breathe. I think I should be good for another one. It's time for our second Terran versus Terran between two viewers in Silver League. Spawning here in the bottom left, playing with the red SCVs, we have Faustus, or Faustus, or Faustus. I'm not 100% sure. His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue SCVs, he goes by the name of Sergeant Fluff. Or Sergeant Floof. Something along those lines. Right from the get-go, man, look at this. Literally, Faustus' first structure is already late. He's already supply blocked. Like, we're 30 seconds into the game. He's already supply blocked. It's not that hard, man. It's really not that hard. Okay, so what about this SCV? What's this one gonna do? <laughs> so why don't we pull another SCV? 
Oh, we're gonna... F oh, okay. All right, we're gonna be quick on the second depot. The only problem right now is that he can't make a, a tech lab or a reactor on, on this barracks without lifting it up. Either way, the opponent, what is he up to so far? Looks a little bit more standard. Sartan Fluff, paying attention to what's happening. Mm, uh, I don't like this too much, but fair enough. Going for a second barracks. Is he gonna go instantly orbital? Come on. Orbital. Come on, the barracks is done. Go orbital. Okay, we're waiting until the SCV is done. Good, good, good. Then we go orbital, right? Okay, orbital. Orbital. Come on, orbital. Hey, orbital! There you go, Sergeant Fluff. Legend. Well done, my man. Second gas geyser. Okay. Guess we're gonna pump out a bunch of Reapers. This, at the very least, has the semblance of a build order, which is nice. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Faustus. I mean, <sighs> Faustus. What is it with people in Silver League and their disgust of Orbital Commands? I don't understand. Like, Orbital Commands are probably the best structure that Terran has, okay? Like, l like literally. <sighs> Anyways, a Reaper is out. Normally, this would be the moment where you're expecting your opponent's Reaper to meet you halfway throughout the... Uh, or, or through the map when you're going in for the scout. Problem is, though, at this point that Faustus has been so late and everything already. He's even going for a tech lab right now. I'm not sure what the tech lab is going to do here. We go for a factory. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so what? <sighs> I understand that, like, a lot of people don't actively try to get better in StarCraft 2. And that's obviously fine, right? If you just play for fun, that makes a lot of sense. But... Isn't it way more fun to play a more efficient game? Or is that just, like, am I just crazy? <laughs> like, it would drive me nuts to hit three supply blocks by the three-minute mark and to just end up with so much less army than the opponent, right? I don't know. I don't really care if I win or lose that much. But I do want to feel like I was at least playing a decent enough game. Whereas, you know, if you want to make it, or if you've made it to Silver League, you've obviously played a couple of games. You're probably aiming to win, right? Why, why not just, like, why try to reinvent the wheel? Why not just go for strategies and build orders and, like, you, you just Google it and maybe you come across one of my, my, one of my YouTube videos, right? Even though my Terran builds are a little bit older. Um, they'll still be miles better than what's going on over here, man. Anyways, anyways, why do we not have an orbital command? Orbitals are so good. All right, so what are we doing? We're fast forwarding. That's what we're doing. Another supply block over here. Double depot is going to finish up though. We have a bunker on the high ground for no apparent reason. Sensor tower before command center. You know what? Just like that, even though certain fluff was doing a hell of a lot better in the first couple of minutes of the game, Faustus is now all the way back into this. <laughs> because of the the sensor tower rush. Oh, okay, we canceled that orbital. We're going building armor? Wait, did we just get a freaking engineering bay to rush out the building armor upgrade? Well, that's a new type of strategy, man. One that I'm not too familiar with. Now we can fit six things inside of a bunker. Which is kind of cool, right? Not something we normally see in StarCraft 2 that often. This is indeed a thing in multiplayer, but it's not something we normally see. So all of the bunkers right now have six slots available, plus they look a little bit more badass. Okay. Gonna slow it back down to a regular game speed. Gotta speed it back up to non-regular game speed. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, I thought the man was moving out, but uh, apparently he decided to sit there for another half minute or so. You know what, though? Both of these players are doing a much better job, especially Faustus right now, of macroing. For what it's worth, the man's barely got any money, and he's basically got no income. Oh, there you go. I mean, you have some more, man. I Like, why do we not go orbital? Oh, my God. I'm going to stop talking about the orbital comments. But it drives me crazy. Hello. Are we not going to... What are we doing right now, man? This army was was just as big two minutes ago when it stood over here. Like, we're now just gonna rent... Like, we're waiting for these units. This is what the result of two minutes is. This this right over here. Like, this, this is what we're waiting for. Is this gonna make a difference? 
I would wager that this makes the army way, way weaker because obviously you're hitting like two minutes later. It's not like you're gonna be able to get much done anyway, though. Sergeant Fluff just loaded up his units into Medivex 2. Or 2. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming that's what Faust is one. Ah, he's only got one Medivex, actually. Uh, uh, okay. Are we gonna siege the tanks up? There you go, buddy. Well done. Okay, Sergeant Fluff thought about going across the map finally after these units set in their plane. Like, they've already been served four snacks, three cups of coffee. The waitress keeps, uh, or not the waitress, sorry, the, uh... I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in a plane, okay? But she's already gone through the aisle 17 times at this point. Finally, the planes are heading, are heading out. It was a bit of a delay. It happens, it happens. Remember flying, guys? Me neither. Whoa, look at this marauder over here. The superhero death. Are we just gonna power through this? No Stimpak, no combat shield? Oh no, we do have combat shield, we just don't have Stimpak. Fair enough. In the meantime, on the other side of the map... Uh, maybe he's not even gonna finish up the Stimpak upgrade, because it's still... Oh my god. <laughs> do we have a base race? Is that what we have? Oh no, don't tell me you're gonna lose this orb. Oh! Why do you guys hate your orbital command so much? You could f uh. Maybe not this one though. Sergeant Fluff, you can't lose this one, okay? Stimpak, by the way, did finish up for the player in red as well because uh, Sergeant Fluff was not paying attention to the little green light. Liberator right here sieges up on top of all of the SCVs. There are Vikings available though, so Fausto should be able to uh, find that thing as well that's floating off towards. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send him over there. Anyways, there is now currently the command center of the opponent, Faustus, heading on over towards the bottom right-hand corner. It's a little bit awkward because Sergeant Fluff, uh, Sergeant Fluff here also lifted up one of his factories and is hanging that one out in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, you guys are supposed to be hidden. You guys are supposed to be, like, secretively moving... Oh, God. Secretly moving over, over in this direction. Is he looking for the orbital? Oh, no! Attack. Faustus, no! Really? Really? It's right there, mate. Oh god. Oh god. He's he's looking around at the Vikings right now, trying to see where the orbital command went. Not considering that it just could have gone to the corner of the map, apparently. Oh no! That's embarrassing. Well, he's probably got the attention span of like, I don't know. Did he just build a factory over or sorry, a Hellion over here? Only for it to now get surrounded? This oh my what? You can't make this up. A random factory found a bunch of random SCVs in the bottom right corner. He decides to land it and then build a Hellion only for it to get surrounded by SCVs? That's better writing than most Hollywood movies I've watched recently, man. Fantastic. Alright, so we're just gonna go for the next hidden location. <laughs> Fair enough. Look at this sneaky orbital command. There's like a pilot probably sitting right around right here. He's like, okay, full, full gas to the corner as fast as we can. <laughs> the sensor tower is actually helping out quite a bit. Finally, Faustus is gonna start uh, killing those, but... Sergeant Fluff has had full vision of where those units were for quite some time. Oh, couple of Vikings. There you go. There you go. There you go. I thought we were just gonna move command over each other, but no. Don't lead... Oh, God. He almost led the Vikings back towards where that final base of Faustus is at. Uh, that's not great. He's got a decently large army over here. Sieged up the tanks over on the high ground, not realizing he's still in... <laughs> in sensor tower range. He is moving on over to the top left though, and he is now retaking his opponent's main base. The problem is that there's like no minerals over here anymore, but I guess that's a problem for future Sergeant Fluff. Uh, you know, th that's how I like to live my life as well. It's like, you know, something might affect me in the long term. But that's going to be a problem for later, for future Loco, right? Current Loco doesn't really care. Alright, so all of these Marines, after using their combat drugs, are going to be healed back up to full. Orbitals in the top left, 400 Minerals. Decides to start up a... Oh my god. Decides to queue up a couple of... Uh, you have an SCV over here, yeah. Uh, decides to couple up or start up a couple of SCVs, but he obviously can't because he's a supply block. Really, really needs to drop down. 
I mean, some supply. There you go. Go for some depots. Not bad at all. Faust is, by the way, at 2,200 minerals. We're a little bit late in that additional production, my man. I feel like this command center was flying there for like a good three minutes. Sergeant Fluff, though, ready to YOLO in some of his units. Siege tanks are not siege... Oh, they are sieged up. Okay, he finds this base! Lock on right there. Lock on, lock on, lock on. No lock on. Okay, no lock on, dude. Lock on's for noobs. Agreed. Okay, he's trying to see if he could maybe chase this down, but he's too slow to pull that off. So instead, he once again drops the units out of the medivac. All right, all right. So what do we have now? Factory in the bottom section. Sergeant Fluff still looking around, trying to figure out if his opponent maybe retook his main base or something along those lines, even though he has seen all of this. Faustus is rebuilding. He's adding on a ton of depots. I would not mind seeing uh, some additional production here instead. Maybe, I'm just going to say, uh, an orbital command. You know, an orbital command would be pretty good, huh? So you can drop some mules, get some more money. No? All right, well, at least he's got supply depots for days right now. He's not going to hit a... I don't think he's going to be hitting another supply block anytime soon, at least. Additional barracks. No attachments on those, obviously, because attachments are for noobs. Rally point mis rallied over here. There we go, though. All right. So this is going to, yeah, give him quite a lot of mineral income. With those mules returning, look at this. He's barely got any workers mining, but he's still going to be fine. He doesn't even need any workers mining because he's got mules. Look at his Faustus. Faustus going for another command center in the bottom right hand corner. Building up SCVs here. Didn't I say I was going to shut up about the orbital command? Well, evidently, I, 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 yeah, that was a lie. Is he still making more supply depots? My god. That 30 second supply block at the beginning of the game, right? 30 second mark. Uh, that really, uh, really hurt him. Well, if you're going to lower every depot, please lower the last ones as well. Come on. No? She's adding on fucking... Uh, okay. Anyways. Sudden Fluff. Macroing two bases at once that are in the opposite sides of the map. Not easy, to be honest. It's actually quite difficult to pull that off. He's got units all over the map right now. One way of macroing, I guess. <laughs> Quote unquote macroing is by queuing up as many SCVs inside of one of those orbitals as possible. But at least he's making orbitals, right? So, you know. That sensor tower is still over there! Are you kidding me right now, dude? If you mind this, your opponent is literally gonna see little blips on the radar! Does he not know how, how, how sensor towers work? For those of you wondering, okay? Sensor tower, big circle on the minimap. Everything caught within that circle is gonna appear as a little red blip. Which is super helpful. Okay. Faustus has found out that his opponent retook his main. Heads on over in that direction right now. Even the siege tanks are joining in too. Leaving this base all on its own? Really? We're just gonna like not macro here either, right? No. Macroing is for plebs. For people that make orbital commands and stuff. Crazy. Okay. SCVs are apparently evacuating the base right now. Sergeant Fluff realizing that he's probably not going to be able to hold on. At the same time, though, he still has those metafacts that were inside of his natural expansion from earlier. He decides to float those on over, the units inside of them as well, obviously, towards this base. Hello, drop him. There you go, drop it like it's hot, dude. Base race 2.0. I mean, Faustus is going to be able to get to his old main and realize that there used to be stuff here. Did he actually steal the add-ons? I think he may have stolen the add-ons. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you've rebuilt them in the exact same spot. Either way. <laughs> we have two base races. In one game. This is the s is he gonna hit another supply block? I think Faust is maybe hitting another supply block. Does um, certain Fluff know of the base in the bottom right? He does not. He still has that factory out there, but he probably forgot about it. So we have the second base race of this game. <laughs> both players thinking they're outsmarting the opponent, but it turns out they both still have more stuff. This command center will also be killed. Faustus has no idea about the base in the top left. He just used Stimpak to try and kill this command center even faster. Fair enough, I guess. A little greedy, but also the Marauders were stimped. 
I love- No, stop the stimming, man! Are you crazy? I love that he's also stimming the Marauders. That's so funny to me. Okay. Okay, now we're not stimming? Now we're not stimming! Now we're not stimming! Are you kidding me? Luckily, Faustus is very slow on the sea. No! Why are we not stimming? Are you crazy? What in the world was that? Oh my god! He stimmed to kill a command center that could not go anywhere, and then for a barracks as well that could not go anywhere, and then when the actual fight hit, he didn't want to stim because I guess it put his units at too low of an HP count? <sighs> Better than Hollywood, man. The twists and turns in these games are just so unexpected. Definitely not something I would have come up with. Incredible. Alright, Sartan Fluff. Losing most of his production. Has decided to now add on some new orbitals, or some... <sighs> oh god, okay. Well that's... That doesn't count as macro, bro. This does not count as macro. Are you kidding me right now, man? What are we doing? You're broke! We got- oh. Better than Hollywood. Confirmed. Alright. Faustus. Still with his, like, orbital command allergy. Does- <laughs> I don't know, maybe his SCVs get itchy or something, where they're too close to an orbital, I'm not sure. He does have a large army, he just doesn't know where his opponent is. He's scouted everywhere, so it has to be top left, right? Which is the only area he hasn't been to. There you go. There you go, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead, yes. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Go, go, go. There's quite a lot of Marines available once again, though. Okay, he's got to find... Like, there you go. There you go. Siege the tank! Siege the tank! Siege the tank! Siege the tank! Siege the... What? Don't attack the reactor! Re oh, no! No, no! Mate, mate, mate. Don't tell me you lose this. Okay, there's still another... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, nice micro there, actually. Starting fluff with the control. <sighs> I think I'm starting to understand what Motlis is meant. I think I'm getting it now. I, I Yeah, I think I get it. All right. So... Sergeant Fluff, with the reinforcements, still cleans this up. Look at this. The only reason the man is in the game is because of... Okay, I'm gonna shut up, but like... Seriously, though. Do you think he's got it? Nah, no, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Are you kidding me, Loco? Um... So what are we doing now? Is, is it Sergeant Fluff that wins this game? I guess it has to be, right? What? No, 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 that was good. That was pretty good. I mean, if you're gonna siege up anywhere, that was like... Best case scenario, I guess. Okay, he's now also seen his opponent's other base right over here. The clock is ticking, Faustus. Couple of uh, structures spread around the map. Sergeant Fluff actually doing a good job macroing out of all of those things. Here comes Faustus, though, sieging up the <laughs> Sieging up the tank. I like it. There goes Jimmy. Disintegrated before he reaches the surface of 2000 Atmos. Ay, 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 ay. I would love to see a third base race in one game. I would love to see another base race, but I don't think it's gonna happen, because at this point, Faustus doesn't have an army. I mean, he's got a little bit of an army. Like, top left to bottom right is actually an incredibly long distance. Is there enough right now for the Blue Terran player to break through all of these structures and units? I think this might just be the moment, yeah. Side and Fluff at this point, significantly ahead of the opponent. Faustus does not GG out, but he does leave the game. Alright, one more. One more. It's time for one last Terran versus Terran. Another Silver League match. Once again, we're on 2000 Atmos. And spotting in the top right hand corner, we have Beaster. And the opponent in the bottom left 
He goes by the name of Lons Money. Lons, Lons Money. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. What are we doing? All right, depot in the wrong location. Fantastic. Depot over here also in the wrong location, but at the very least at the right time. That's something. <laughs> oh no. Oh god, I love these games though. They're so painful. It's just, you know, they're so painful. My favorite part is whenever people look in the comment section of these videos, and there's... Wait, is he gonna... Is he gonna barracks proxy right out? <laughs> He's gonna barracks proxy instead of his opponent, Nat. Are you kidding me? Anyways, I always see people commenting below these videos, saying things like, Oh my god, Loco! I've never played this game, and I would be better than these guys. Spoiler alert, you'll be way worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you'd, you'd definitely be way worse. I'm sorry, man. It is what it is. Game's really hard, okay? Anyways, Beaster... Um, is proxying inside of his opponent's natural expansion? This is... <laughs> the wall of shame. He's gonna need a fourth depot over here to, like, complete it. Well, at least he's not gonna hit a supply block anytime soon. That's something. So what is Beaster gonna do? Just pump out Marines inside of his opponent's natural? I think so. Oh my god. Lons Money has started up a proxy barracks inside of his opponent's main base too. Beaster should know, right? That like that SCV didn't leave. Actually, I think this is a five depot wool. He needs another one over here and then another one over there. Yeah, yeah, it's a five depot wool. Okay, Lons Money hits a huge supply block, starts up a b oh god, starts up one of those depots as he hits the supply block already. Which is not ideal, believe it or not. <sighs> okay, barracks inside of the main base does finish. SCV that's building the supply depot actually in a little bit of trouble right now. Okay, he does finish it because apparently uh, Boaster has a heart, or Beaster rather has a heart. Did I call him Buster earlier? I may have. Another uh, bunker, because of course there's gonna be another bunker. I don't know what the bunker is gonna be doing here, but... Just a way of dropping your money, I suppose. Lons money already, though, sitting at 450. 250 gas as well. He's making Marines! Why are we making Marines out of... Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Here we go. What are we doing? Just going after the mineral line? I don't mind it. There you go. Lons money. No longer supply blocked at the very least. He won't be supply blocked for another little while. The problem is... Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna back off. Oh, he showed the one marine? Are you kidding me? Why did he show one marine? Okay, anyways. This is happening apparently while, you know, all of those units over here are also getting surrounded. And eventually most of them get picked off. Yeah, we're just sprinkling in marines one at a time, which is really not ideal. Oh god, no, no, no. So there's that other marine from the other side of the map. Uh, no, what? Oh, gee. oh god. No, Jimmy, 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 what? Jimmy. Jimmy didn't even... In these guys' defense, okay, they do have the micro and fight two different areas of the map at once. Which is surprisingly tricky. So it's not like they're only staring at the thing that I'm looking at right here in the game. Lons money though, making an orbital command. Same can be said for Beaster with that classic orbital command skin. What? Why are we going back home? Did we owe army hotkey? Fair enough. This guy making the walk of shame all the way back. The five wall supply depot wall. Will never finish at this point, okay? How is he ever gonna make his opponent pay for it? I don't know. One of the barracks actually in a little bit of trouble. Beastar over here is still pumping out units. Why do you have units inside of the bunker? Get him out of there! Get him inside of the main base, my man! Are we just settling right now for killing a depot? Is that what we're doing? Huh? 
Whoa, where are those going? Is he sending them across the map? But he has depot, or sorry, he has SCVs over here. Speaking of SCVs, these guys are now really just... <laughs> Pass the unit in the bunker. Beaster with the 300 IQ star senses over here has realized exactly where he needs to be positioning those things. Mules can't attack, by the way, at all. So even though they are pulled away over here from the mineral line, they're not really doing much until right now when they started repairing, I suppose. Alon's money, though, dude. He's got it in his names already, I guess. He's... Oh. <laughs> the five supply depot wall of shame. Fantastic. You know one advantage hmm. of the viewer submitted games is that I never have trouble coming up with a like a title for these videos. I have dozens. Like in this one video, I've already named dozens of potential titles for this for this one. With the pro games, especially if it's like a standard match, it can be kind of tricky to come up with like you know a good title for the video. One of my most disliked things, by the way, about making YouTube videos is making the thumbnails and the titles and stuff can be very annoying. Anyways. Oh my god. Why did we not just like get rid of this barracks yet? Lon's money by the way currently at 8 supply. <laughs> Literally less than he started with this in his game. This marine, now 2 kills to its name. I think Beastar is winning this, right? He should be at the very least. Oh my god. Well, if, it, if there's one hero marine right here, stuck between the, the two structures, that is just gunning down all of those marines one at a time. Since Boaster here is actually target firing down the barracks, he's losing the marines. He's losing the marines. Yeah, finally he realizes that his, his, his marine count here was dwindling. And actually, Lon's money may very well be back in this. Oh my god, no way. What? You started up a freaking command center over here, Boaster, Beaster? I think I've been calling him Boaster the whole time. I don't know why. Pick him off, pick him off before they go into... Oh. Um. So the command center over here, right? What about that? There's already an NG bay. Pretty sure Beaster is planning on making a planetary. But he's got no gas. Oh! There you go. He needs gas in order to, like, make a planetary. <laughs> is it gonna be a planetary fortress contained after proxy and barracks instead of his opponent's natural expo? Is that really what's going on right now? Well, at least you can't say that his marines aren't brave, right? They've been fighting in the face of danger the entire time. Incredible odds going against them, and even though it's never really worked out in his favor, I think he may very well be slowly winning the war. Alright, so that barracks, it was floated away from the main base. It's gonna slowly burn to death. Inside of it right now. We have a bunch of uh, scientists and researchers and construction people and all that running around the campfire, singing songs together, reminiscing of better times. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear them. Will this marine spawn? Oh! That marine. The final. The final marine. Will be the one who stays alive to live until the story, but uh, I'm not a... Uh I'm not 100% sure, man. Lon's money has got a lot of marines. Oh, the concave. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, he had the concave at least. Now he's giving it up. As we all know, the concave is the superior geometrical shape. Maybe not as good as a hexagon, because hexagons are kind of OP, but... Hexagons are the best of guns. Okay, even though Lon's money here definitely had a chance. I think he wasted it there, not having a couple of those marines on oh, on attack. Oh, you know what? Ooh, there you go. Micro, micro, micro. No micro. Micro, micro, micro. No, no micro. 
The only thing I don't like about the classic skins is that I can never tell if it's a planetary and orbital or a command center. Surprisingly hard to see. Okay. We have the tech lab researching the combat shield upgrade over here. He's going for the plus one armor. <laughs> the plus one armor. <laughs> you always go mi or attack upgrades first, okay? With marines. Always, always, always. That hit. No! That was the chosen one, man! Ugh. Sag. As the kids say. How did I do? I feel like I nailed it. Sag. We have an armory as well. Don't know what we want to do the uh, what we want to make the armory for, but fair enough. We're also mining mostly gas over here, it seems. Yeah, put them all in the gas, dude. For no apparent reason at all. Okay, we decided better of it. Never mind. We are gonna go mine gas. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay, combat shield at this point is done though. Dondo? I thought it was Donda. Dondo. 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 Rotters in the back, helping out a little bit. Should probably be in the front of the party. You can see they're not really that strong when it comes to like fighting marines one on one. I think that might just barely be enough. Ooh, there you go. There you go. <sighs> Dondo. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> High sec auto tracking, really? Oh, we did go planetary. Okay, I was gonna say we did go planetary fortress. That gives the planetary plus one ranged. That upgrade over there. Next level, dude. Game changer. Oh my god, man. These guys don't really care about their marines, do they? Look at this. 67, 64. <sighs> Boaster has got a, a large army, though. And at this point, after about 12 minutes of both players losing at the same time, I think we may finally have arrived at the point where our red Terran player just has way more stuff than the blue Terran player can deal with? Question mark? Oh, are we gonna really roll the siege tank a little bit? Oh, mm, mm. Kill the tank, humans! Get him! Okay, he gets him, eventually. Command center taking a lot of damage. If you lose that one, obviously you can't float it to the corner, but GG is cold. And just like that, it is gonna be Beaster. Who obtains the victory. Alrighty, now if you have some awesome games of StarCraft 2 as well that you would like me to go ahead and cast, you can submit it to replays at loco.tv. Please be aware though, I may very well make fun of your decision making, so if, if you can't handle any criticism, uh, yeah, too bad. <laughs> Anyways, shout out to the people that send over these games here today. And of course, thank you as well to Motlessis for selecting these games for me to go ahead and cast, even though it was very painful for him. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.